Happy Thursday to everybody. This is Mornings with Michael brought to you for informational and educational purposes only. Uh, let's go share my screen, take a look at the S&P 500 map. Um, tech was down earlier in the week, it's bouncing back a little bit here. Uh, Amazon and NVIDIA were flat. Visa falling off a little bit. And so is uh, MasterCard. Uh, oil continues, energy continues to do well. Uh, healthcare, a mixed bag. Utilities up. Industrial. So there you have it. And we'll go to see if I have that screen. Yes. Indeed, like I said, 85 to 90 percent of people, possibly more, should have an annuity or something that acts like an annuity. Index Universal Life acts like an annuity in some ways. Uh, annuity steps up in value, does not come back down. Steps up in value, does not come down, whereas the index is bob and weave. Index uh, an annuity gives you somewhere between 22 and 35% or more of a bonus when you open a new account. And this in lies a 5% annual average growth difference in an annuity. So there you have it. Let's go to our news. I'll bring up our chart so we can look at the stocks and how they get affected by the news. This is XLS's trading in a tight range. Um, I'll take, see if we have any news about them. The S&P 500, Russell and NASDAQ uh, will rebalance on close this Friday. Changes were announced after the close for the Russell on 818. 9-1 final, 9-1 um, for S&P, and 9-8 um, on the NASDAQ, September 8th. Euro area industrial production decreased 1.10% in July of 2023 over previous month. Consensus was a negative 7%, negative 0.7%. Japan producer Prices rose 3.2% year over year. And Japan's retail sales growth, 6.8% tops forecast. Japan's core inflation slows in July as expected. So let's see if I uh, can bring up uh, our CPI and our PPI rep reported today. So inflation rose to the rises 0.6% in August. I believe it was 0.2% in July. So that's a huge um, increase in inflation for all urban consumers. Increased 0.6% seasonally adjusted and rose 3.7% over the last 12 months, which is not seasonally adjusted. For all items, less food and energy increased 0.3% in August, up 4.3% for the year. And that's the story there. Let's take a look at the PPI report. So August wholesale inflation rises 0.7% hotter than expected, but core prices in check. Uh, producer price index higher than the 0.4% estimate in the biggest monthly gain since June of 2022. However, excluding food and energy, the PPI rose 0.2% in line with estimates. Uh, elsewhere, 
Retail sales climbed higher than expected, 0.6% in August, well above the 0.1% initial jobless claims, nudged up to 220,000 for the week, ended September 9th below the 225,000 estimate. So there's our PPI report basics. So let's get back to our company news. Some of the fastest growing companies in um, China, Li Auto, right here. It's like a base on, this is like a nothing. Um, we'll just have to can see how that plays out, XP. V looks very similar, slightly better than Liato. And then Neo, slightly worse. Shares trading lower after the Financial Times reports that the EU to launch anti-subsidy probe into Chinese electric vehicles. Continuing in motor vehicle production, Ford. Uh, it's like a gap down this morning and it bounced back towards a close. Set of plans to double production of the hybrid F-150 pickup trucks in 2024. I just wanted to double check, make sure that uh, we were recording here. So the hybrid powertrain will be offered at the same price as the truck equipped for the six-cylinder EcoBoost combustion powertrain for 2024 model year. Ford is also upgraded to buy from sell at UBS, citing greater than expected earnings resilience driven by the automaker's Ford Pro segment. On to airlines. Spirit lowers quarter three adjusted operating margin to negative 14.5 to negative 15.5. The stock was up today, nearly two and a half percent. Um, cuts revenue forecast to between 1.24 billion and 1.25 billion against previous estimate of 1.3 to 1.32 billion. Uh, and on to restaurant brands. QSR is a ticker symbol. It bounces over 2% today to buy back up to 1 billion of common stock over the next two years. I guess that'll get some interest. On to energy, industrials, and materials. U.S. crude oil futures finish 1.8% higher at 88.84 a barrel on Tuesday, making the largest one day gain. Let's see where they are right here, more than a week, and they gap up again today. Uh, pretty amazing. Calumet Specialty Products Partners said David Lunin would become the company's new chief financial officer, succeeding Vince Durango Donargo. I apologize to Vince who will step down December 31st. And they got a nice bounce off of the 10 day moving average on that news. They're building a big uh, cut pattern. See, it goes back to March of this year. So this is a huge um, consolidation. Can continue to watch that one. Onto Granite Ridge Resources, 7.1 million share secondary price at $5. And nobody really likes that, but interesting. It bounces today uh, up three and a quarter percent. Workhorse shares rise after saying it received IRS approval as a qualified manufacturer for the commercial clean vehicle credit. Uh, doesn't really look like it today. It may have rose and sunk back down, down 0.71%.
on the financials. See what financial ETF did. It looked like it gapped up here and finished on the high for the day. Alliance Bernstein preliminary assets under management decreased 1.4% to $694 billion. Um, and it's building, looks like a shelf pattern here. We've got um, pretty tight range. For some reason, my pointer will not draw the line under. Got a very tight shelf there. One point declined 1.4% 1 to 694 billion during August 2023 from 704 billion at the end of July. On to Artisan Partners Asset Management. Preliminary assets under management as of August, total 142.8 billion. Uh, Artisan Global Funds accounted for 69.4 billion of the total assets under management. And um, their stock fell pretty high volume on, on that one. Franklin Resources, BEN, preliminary month end assets under management of $1.42 trillion. Would you like to have that in your bank account? Compared to 1.45 trillion in July 31st, and pretty flat here. Under all the moving averages at the moment, IBZ Invesco's Limited preliminary month and assets under management, 1.527.7 billion, a decrease of 2.7 percent, and uh, pretty flat. Also under all the moving averages. Virtuous Investment Partners, preliminary assets under management, $169.4 billion as of August 31st, 2023. In addition, the company provided services up to $2.6 billion of other fee-earning assets, which are not included in assets under management. And as you can see, it... Um, Moved up above all of its moving averages, a pretty good volume over here. And finally, Victory Capital Holdings, assets under management of $161.9 billion, initially sold off, pretty strong gap down, tried to recover in the top 75% of its range today. That's uh, positive. So they have 161.9 billion as of August 2023. Uh, and average assets under management for August of 162.1 billion. On to healthcare, NVO, which has been getting a lot of buying. Uh, trying to move up today after a slight down tip to the 10 day moving average, conducts a two for one stock split. Iger said it would discontinue its phase three limit two trial of Pegniferon Lambda in patients with chronic hepatitis Delta. And it was up 10%. I'm not sure if that's because of the news, but um, it's quite a move, but this is a penny stock. Morphosis. Receives FDA fast track designation for tool, tool mim etostat in endometrial cancer. Uh, it's up 0.76%. And my news has moved all over the place. Procept Biorobotics said it has received FDA approval to conduct the study investigating the safety and efficacy of aquablation therapy 
treatment of prostate cancer. Um, didn't help their stock any. It was down uh, early 1.7%. Rocket Pharmaceuticals. Wow, look at that jump. Two days in a row. Uh, announced a $150 million common stock offering after it announced that alignment has been reached with the FDA on the global phase two pivotal trial of RPA501 for Dannon disease. And does not say what Dannon disease is. Take a quick look here. Dannon disease is a rare X-linked dominant genetic disorder that manifests with a clinical triad of cardio myopathy, skeletal myopathy, and intellectual disability it is caused by genetic mutations in the lysosome associated membrane two. So there we have that answer. Finally, on to technology, media, and telecom. I'm not sure what happened to our screens, but we'll reshare them. China has flagged security issues with Apple's. Bring Apple up. iPhones. Well, noting that it is not banning purchases, Bloomberg News reported. Uh, didn't do uh, to anything. Um, China, Huawei. H-U-A-W-E-I technology signed a global patent cross-licensing deal with Xiaomi, X-I-A-O-M-I Incorporated, according to a statement from Huawei. The deal covers communication technologies, including 5G. It said that it marks a resolution of a patent licensing dispute between the two firms. Squarespace files mixed security shelf. I um, wonder if that news had leaked out earlier because it had been trending down and now it pops the day of news is announced. And then finally, T-Mobile said it will acquire Spectrum in 600 megahertz band from Comcast. Proposed deal of total cash consideration between 1.2 billion, 3.3 billion, and T-Mobile is moving up pretty strong. Um, got two good days of volume this one day had a big sell off next day it popped up have a couple more blue bars under here it's working on the right side of its pattern uh, see if we can bring up Comcast yeah their stock gapped up today and we've got some pretty good volume on it. So that's our news for the day. And let's look at it. We looked at the financials. Let's look at some other trending ETFs. Energy continues to be strong. This is what most uh, professional money managers were buying in September. You can see the volume spikes over here. Looked at uh, oil a little earlier. We saw the gap up there. Communications with Meta. May have a little news on Meta um, a little later. In the education section. This looks like a pretty, pretty positive. Bounced up here, pulled back a little bit, and really moved up strong today. Volume picked up a little bit. So that's Google and Meta are the leaders in this one. Utilities we saw in the heat map moved up. Got a strong move there. 
see uh, Ottertail had sold off quite a bit, had gone up to 92, had a little bounce over here. Moving on, real estate got a nice bounce today. Um, before we go any further, let's look at dollar really bounce today. Big gap up. Gold should be down. Actually, it was pretty flat. Volume was pretty high. Uh, as we know, gold and silver are usually reversely correlated to the price of US dollar. That silver gap down when the open tried to bounce back a little bit. Still down pretty close to 1% today. Okay, copper, Canadian copper mining. It's definitely a double bottom formation. We'll see if it can make the right side. Uh, let's see. We got Southern Copper. It's remaining pretty tight there. Freeport. Bounce, gapped up, and then sold off. Looks like it's trying to hold above this 50 day moving average. Now back to our ETFs. Biotech got a little bounce. Not too much going on. XBI. Interesting, the IBB biotech index has taken over the lead from the S&P biotech, which had been leading for a long time. Software had a little bit of a bounce. Today was the last day of the Salesforce conference. About 60,000 people in downtown San Francisco at the Moscone Center. Technology had a tiny bounce, still under uh, its moving averages. Volume was little light. Look at our semiconductor index. Still pretty flat under its 50 day. A little bounce in infrastructure. Our airlines still um, remain all under all the moving averages. As we know, not too much good happens down there. Out of the office for leisure activities. Now that's a nice bounce. Building materials. Got a big bounce there. Mining and metals. Wow. Now that's a big bounce, huge move. Didn't show it at the few metals that we looked at, but that is amazing. And look at that volume. And our housing sector up slightly. Take a look at our bond yields. Interesting, the housing bounced and so did the 10 year interest rate on, on bonds. It's very elevated, 4.289. And TBT, the 20 year, about the same move. Wow, look at that massive volume. Look at our volatility index, it's falling. Like I said, uh, there was a 100% chance that this was filled the gap and it has now filled the gap. So 
S&P 500, inversely related to the VIX. Got a pretty good bounce here, pretty good volume. The NASDAQ looking very similar. Volume is a little under what you'd like to see, but they're, as we said earlier, they're above their 50 day moving averages. Uh, small caps, got a big bounce. St still, it's under most of its moving averages, but pretty good volume. And the Dow Jones got a good move too, and very good volume here. So let's take a take a look at uh, where the money has been moving. So before we go there and then jump start and put um, education in. We looked at Lee Auto earlier. So Lee Auto expected earnings growth for the current fiscal year is 7,800%. We've seen the stock has moved up quite a bit. It's now pulling back a bit. The stock's uh, 2023 price gain is up 98.4%. Next one on our list is Shopify, expected earnings growth this year, 1,201%. And we can see that it's gone up, the stock has gone up 80.4% this year. Now it's got what we call a cup with a handle. If we get pretty good volume and it breaks above this line here, that's an area where a lot of people like to buy. NVIDIA, 187% expected growth this year. Stock is up 211% uh, this year. It's been considered the Michael Jordan of stocks. In the solar area, Array Technologies, Expected growth this year, 172%. And it looks like we just got a breakout of a pattern. We can look at the weekly. Looks like a base on base. Uh, first base here. Second kind of ugly base here. Uh, and it just broke out today. It tried to break out over here at a pullback, and now it's up here. Good indicator here is the relative strength line climbs to new highs. Just draw this line right across here. Clearly see the relative strength line breaks out to new highs, and its rating is 90, beating 93% of all other stocks on the market. And finally, Meta. Meta platforms, Facebook, as we know it, expected annual growth this year, 114%. The stock is up 153%. And just kind of, I guess you could do an early buy as it looks like it broke above this trend line here. Said 311. The natural breakout is $326.30. You want it to be 10 cents above um, the previous high, and you want to see a big spike in volume. So that's there. And before we move on to where the Big money is flowing today. Let's take a look at some of the stocks that we've highlighted. We had a slight pullback 
after a big run up, 50% run up from the day when we highlighted it over here. The next week it broke out, I believe it was right around 22. We highlighted on this show, broke out, went up about 50% and it retraced a little bit of 36 to, we had a little shake out here. I think a professional money managers wanted to buy the shares a little cheaper. We had a shake out, recovered in the same day and it's getting support over here. It looks like it's trying to pop above the 10 day moving average and it's much increased volume from uh, the previous day. So I bought um, 25 more shares today. So the other biotech stock I highlighted the same day. was when we had this tight formation over here, said we'd have a resolution one way or the other, and we did to the downside. It bounced up here. I believe I bought some right over here, just to see what it's gonna do. Got a little bit of a pullback on low volume. You wanna see pullbacks on low volume. So this pullback is on low volume and Looks like this pullback two days is on low volume, which is positive. Kava Mediterranean Grill. We talked about the IPO base, which is 16 to 25 days. Right around, let's see, it was 40, right around 41. Probably was this day. I said, look out for the breakout. Following day, came out a report, I believe it was JP Morgan, suggested a $46 price target. And then we had some pretty massive volume as it moved up, went up to 58. When it came down to 52, I suggested anybody who had shares to sell them because often IPO bases peak and then they fail until while they're going through the institutional due diligence phase. I still think this is a mirror image of Chipotle. The restaurants look like Chipotle. They manufacture all their ingredients in two states on the East Coast, Massachusetts, uh, not Massachusetts, Maryland and Virginia. And uh, where they have a lot of the restaurants and they hope to open, uh, I believe, a thousand more restaurants. Um, that's what they're using their IPO money for. So gone to Okava, really love the food. I think it's great, it's healthy. And um, fast, casual restaurants. And we have one more. Kurosushi, see how they're doing. And they got a pullback as well. Just see if they can get going again. And now let's see where the big money is flowing. So Oracle, who had a pretty lousy conference call, and that's why they had the big sell-off, and it affected the rest of the software. They're up um, a little over, they were up 2% uh, earlier. I'm not sure why this other chart shows the price change up 2% when it's only up 1.63%. But they were, where the big money was flowing today. Increase in volume of 103%. A 
got the wrong ticker symbol. So we got Federal Signal manufactures street cleaning and water blasting equipment, kind of in the same area as CWCO, Consolidated Water, which was on this list earlier, but it has fallen off. Uh, Federal Signal, huge volume, up 3%, 101% increase in volume. Carpenter Technology manufactures and distributes specialty metals, cobalt. It's been on here a few days in a row. It's pretty well extended. Still get a lot of volume in here. I'm really curious about uh, consolidated water. Yeah, it got a, just continues to get buying in here. Um, Cayman Island engaged in development and operations of seawater desalination. Look at this uh, Chinese issue. We have 5,200 stores located in 80 countries under the brand name. And it just keeps marching to a positive drum beat. I don't know if this can keep up this level, but look at all this volume. 131% EPS gain, 12% them. Earning surprise will get your attention up another 5% today. Frog in the software area, I believe. Provides binary repository management solution for software distribution for software developers. It's the IPO in 2020, I believe. Uh, pretty good volume today. Up three and a half percent in the oil area. Oniok gauge in natural gas, gathering and processing in the Rocky Mountains. Got some pretty good volume here. One, two, three, four, five out of six days. 2.2 percent today. 41% of funds own this. It's a pretty low PE. EPS for any 93%. And it looks like the relative strength line just hit new high today. All the positive reasons people are buying this stock. Light and Wonder, global gaming company that develops products and services for gaming, lottery, and digital gaming, up a little over 2%. We got a lot of blue spikes and above average volume, just keeps marching higher. 228% earnings increase in May, and 163% earnings increase in August. And Encino, cloud-based software solution to banks and financial institutions, working on a flat base, it looks like. Got some big volume over here. The earnings increased 325%, but 32% earning surprise. Did sell off a little bit. After hours, just have to see if it can make it into this thir 33.73. It hit above here, so why don't we say 33.83 would be a good place for this to go. Consolidated energy extraction and preparation of coal in the Appalachian Basin. 
look at this move. This is the uh, breakout over here. Got pretty good volume, two days in a row. And then we just got continued volume. Their earnings came in really strong and it moved up. Uh, I'm not sure what that percentage is, but, and it just continues to get buying in this area. And our last one is HSBC. Up a little over 2% on pretty good volume. And always the risk is when you own stocks, this is why we talk about it, the annuities can sell off. These are where money is moving out of silver bowl resources, exploration production of oil and natural gas. Interesting. We just saw two st one stock, uh, Oniok in the same area is doing well, and this one is selling off. PTCT. Therapeutics. Down 3% today. Cocoa Water. Down big time today. Um, not sure what happened here, but um, try to break out and really sold off down 10%. Davida dialysis company that you see a number of places around, especially here in California, sold off of 2.71%. Came in the middle of its range. Had a lot of volume here. Uh, watch this the next couple of days and see what happens. Hewlett Packard. News that Warren Buffett was getting out of this. I'm sure um, this has something to do with a huge volume. Down 1.8% today. It's just, just been trending down. Huge gap down here on negative earnings. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, down about 8%. Develops molecule drugs. And this will be our final one. Cracker Barrel, one of my wife's favorite restaurants, continues to uh, sell off strongly their earnings weren't uh, strong enough even though they were up 14 percent with 11 percent earning surprise we just ate there a couple of weeks ago had a wonderful meal but um, you can have a great company without a great stock return this is um what we learn in investing so that's our story for the day uh, once again, this has been Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. If you have a personal finance question, feel free to reach out in the comments to us. Um, as we always like to say, if you get a 20 to 25% profit, we recommend taking one at least one third of your shares off. If it goes another five to 10%, another third. And then you could hold the last third in just with the roll of the dice. And if you have any losses, five to eight percent, you should take your losses. This way, the math works out for you. Twenty percent minus eight percent will make sure that you have a profitable company. And um, also, if you buy a stock and after a week it hasn't gone into the profit area, you might consider selling that as well. So that's our tips for the day. Hope everybody has a great day and keep working on your goals and activities and you'll amaze what you can achieve out there. Have a great day.